Well, Christian, first off, we should say that this is not a technical manual. Don't want to scare all the listeners out there that are going to hear something about uh, equipment and pushing buttons and everything like this. Oh, this, you this need is this cord, and then you're going to connect this cord, and then I'm going to use a bunch of jargon, and then there's going to be some abbreviations, and then there's going to be more technical jargon. No, I'm just kidding. There's none of that in this book because what I wanted to do in writing this book is to give people all of the advice that they ask me for. Anytime, you know, I, I used to be the director of nonfiction programming at Slate Sister Company Panoply. And part of that job was just going out in the world regularly and talking to people and um, talking about podcasting. And no matter where I was or who I was talking with, people would come up to me and say, hey, these are my biggest questions. And the questions came up over and over again. And what I realized was what people needed to know wasn't the chords. It wasn't the thing about, you know, this program versus that program. It wasn't the gearhead information. That stuff's readily available in any internet search. It's super easy to find, you know, comparison shopping on microphones. What people really needed the answers to most, um, most often, were why am I making this show? Who is it for? How do I promote it? How do I get it out there? And how do I structure the show and create something that people actually want to listen to? I mean, these are the big questions that people need to think about. These are the questions I wanted to answer for them or at least plant the seeds in their heads so that people can answer those questions for themselves. And it really, like I said, you can find anywhere on the internet a comparison shopping for the microphone. And while I was reading the book, it came across to me that this blueprint could be used for so many different types of creative endeavor. It just doesn't have to be for podcasting. Yeah, I've actually had several people write me in from other fields. Um, writers, musicians have written me, which I thought was really fascinating that a lot of musicians have written into me saying that they've uh, used my book now too, because a lot of this is really about owning up to your own voice, not trying to imitate anybody else, knowing how to structure your project and knowing how to put it out into the world so that you're building a community around your product. Because, you know, people all the time are asking, how do I market it? How do I monetize it? How do I maximize it? They're asking all these questions, but none of those things will happen if you don't first build a community around what you're making. And, you know, an audience and a community, those are kind of interchangeable words in a way, but in my mind, a community is so much better than an audience because a community are people who believe in what you're making. They spread the word about what you're doing. They interact with you in all sorts of ways. For example, one of my shows, By the Book, we have a Facebook community with 13,000 people. They log on to the Facebook community every day. They don't just talk about the show. They talk about what's happening in their personal lives. They talk about uh, what's happening in their marriages. They talk about other uh, aspects of their lives. And then those aspects of their lives always kind of weave in things like vulnerability and betterment and topics that are touched on within by the book. That's a community. Those are people who ask each other questions and support each other. And they all came together because of our show. And that is so much more important than just an audience. You want people who actually are part of something and who feel like they're a resident in this little town that you made. And the town is your product.